Welcome to Unscrupled, a subsidiary of Unspoiled. We're doing Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and in this episode, I, Robot, you, Jane, Willow is catfished by a demon. Welcome to Unscrupled. Okay, um, yeah, so, <laughs> before we, before we get into the, um, the dumpster fire that is this episode, who the fuck are you? I'm uh. bitches, and who the fuck are you? I'm money, and guess what, we have something happening, there's someone rising out of the floor in the pool, dun 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 dun, it's Owen! Yay! You will be visited by three podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Hi, Owen. Owen. I'm Owen, and if you're not jacked in, you're not alive. Oh, and, God. And I just realized we spent all that money on that Avatar-level special effects, yeah. and we're an audio podcast. Yeah, you guys can't see it, but I'm blue and have, like, a ponytail, and uh, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, this is why I make the business decisions, even though I'm not good with money. <laughs> All right, so I robot you, Jane. <laughs> I just Owen, you wanted to be on this episode, so I want to hear. Oh, why. oh boy. <laughs> okay, so uh, I was not a Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I didn't watch it in the '90s. Uh, I did watch the movie, which I had taped off of, uh, you know, its TV appearance that I watched over and over, but I never watched the show. So when Natasha moved here to Texas, I decided to give it a shot, and I didn't like it uh, for most of the reasons that Chris, you know, that uh, that Money says on the show. You know, it's just super cheesy and kind of terrible, and uh, I'm kind of hot and cold on Joss Whedon anyway uh, until this episode aired, and uh, this episode is so hilariously terrible that I have completely gone around the other way. It's like the Spider-Man 3 of Buffy episodes. I don't know if we can be friends. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> Wait, which part? Which, which part? Um, pick a noun. Um, is is Spider-Man 3 your favorite Spider-Man movie? I never actually made it to three. Um, yeah, I, I just – and hating Buffy. Hello. What even? Well, to be fair, I, I did not make it – like, you know, unlike Chris, I never had a reason to keep watching. So okay. I didn't make it much past the first season. Oh, okay. Yeah. In that case, I absolutely understand why you wouldn't like it in the first season because the first season is, is – well, it's this. I, so – and yeah. that's what I heard, and I made it a little ways into the second episode, but there's this episode about a shirt, uh, a lone shirt, uh, that uh, that I was just like, no, this is I'm, – I'm, I'm done. Um, a lone but, shirt? What the – what are you even talking about? We're going to talk know. We're gonna talk about Buffy's shirts because I think Owen's <laughs> talking about an episode that uh, I have not seen yet, and he should not spoil me on. Yeah, I shouldn't. Holy, I, I tried to be as cryptic true. as possible. Holy fuck. Like, uh, it's, <laughs> I forgot that in the 90s they thought that cheap-ass dark velvet was a good idea. And Buffy has not one, not two, but three outfits made out of that fuzzy bullshit that is not high quality enough for a hooker motel in Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> Holy you, shit. You, you see way more of their fashion than I do. I'm, I I'm... Uh, okay. All right, let's <laughs> let's let's start at the beginning. <laughs> because oh my god. Um yeah, I there's a there's a demon who looks okay. like discount off in 15th century Italy. <laughs> um and there's a uh, young man and a demon and the young man is so freaking into this demon it's not even funny <laughs> I, I i feel like he was drugged 
to be to be put on set because he had no idea why he was there and he was just smiling. Um, Is I, this I, the guy with the wig? Yeah, yeah, the guy who looks like a Q-tip. He was blissed out on Demon Love. He I, was so happy that he didn't even notice he was a Q-tip. Yeah, Moloch is a sexy motherfucker. I yeah, I mean, come he's on. A very, look at, he's a very look generous at that, lover. Look at that stud muffin. He's so horny. He's got. Hey oh. Did you really just drop that pun? I did. I, I think, did it to, because I don't love you anymore. That's. You get one more, okay? I did, I did it to hurt you. Uh, all right, so Moloch, the demon, has has a thing about breaking people's necks. He loves it. He loves it because it's it requires no special effects. So. Well, once you pop, you just can't stop. That's two. <laughs> <laughs> so he murders one of his followers, and then apparently there's a uh, a bunch of Jedi standing in a circle with a book, shouting into the void. Um. And they lock him in a book, which is a thing you can do. Only, only with horny demons. They're the ones that go into books. So yeah, the everyone ace, knows that. The asexual yeah. demons are, are just like they're, oh, they're invincible. Books. Yeah. Well, they're not invincible. You have to put them on three and a half inch floppies. Yeah. <laughs> There's a joke to be made there, but I'm too tired. <laughs> we all are. If only Natasha were here. The joke is implied. <laughs> I, I have kind of dick joked out at today because holy shit. All right, so um, so for some reason Giles has ordered this book off of whatever 1997 version of eBay because mm-hmm. apparently there is no one checking his receipts when he expenses this for the school library. Well, it must have uh, been on like like a catalog thing because uh, as it turns out, Giles is terrified of computers. Yeah, this is on the – I think it was, like, on a watcher's list, and he's paying it for it with watcher money. They just kind of send him anything archaic that they have lying around. Yeah. He got it at the watcher swap meet. Yes! Oh, my God. That's totally where he got it. Okay. He so, just, he anyway. Just, he, he seems to have no idea what this thing is when they pull it out. So. Well, and, he does once he takes a good look at it, but they don't even show it to him. They just kind of, like – they pull it out of this box, and they're like, ooh, there's a demon on this. Give it to Willow to scan. And she's like, do 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 Business as usual. Don't know what this weird archaic text is, but no one's ever told us that it could be a demon, so we're just going to do our thing because Giles sucks at this. There's a demon on this cover with uh, red rhinestone eyes. Nothing ominous there. And well, you know, all these books have weird shit on them. I mean, the one with vampire in it is made of, like, human flesh or some shit. I mean, come on. They're used to creepy books. But they're usually they've... just books. But are we are we not going to talk about the fact that they think that three uh, Apple, what is it, Apple 2Ds uh, can handle scanning an entire library's worth of books? <laughs> and it's, there's... it's computers. There's, there's just they're the computers magic. Are just, they're just sitting there in the middle of the room. They're not plugged in. <laughs> uh, don't you understand that a computer is a box of magic smoke and it has strange powers that normal mortals cannot comprehend? I was yeah. screaming so much because they kept turning it off by turning off the monitor. I'm like, no, stop it. <laughs> now you know my pain from that time in Alias when they put the goddamn modem on the monitor. Oh, I know your pain. I just, ugh. And you let that happen to me. I really did. I'm sorry. Vengeance is mine. <laughs> so this scans the book, and because of reasons, the demon is now in the computer. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that's a neat idea. Yeah, I think that would totally happen if you scanned a demon book into a computer. You know, I I would get if, if someone reboots this show, I would like the demon to like play World of Warcraft or something and be really good at it. Oh my gosh! Only he would be instead of being like some really demony looking thing, he would be like the prettiest elf girl ever. Maybe you know, if this episode had come out ten years later, that's absolutely what this would have been. It would have been about the dangers of online MMO players. It's already about the dangers of. Um, uh, catfishing. Catfishing before online was, dating. Before I'm pretty there was sure any of this, and I, I said on Facebook, I am going to start a a Moloch grinder profile, 
and see yes. how, <laughs> and see how many bites I get. Please that do. Would be amazing. <laughs> I, I I want you to screen cap so much of that. Yeah, um, see- Say what you will about this episode and how dumb it is. I think Moloch is a much more interesting villain than the Master. I've I've oh, got to absolutely. agree with you there. Like, if there's one thing, Moloch's makeup is terrible, but Moloch himself is. I'm kind of behind this. If only anyone else in the episode could be bothered to like act. I I, yep. I actually really loved the asides that they threw in, where he was like messing up people's papers, and it's like Nazi Germany was was a model of a well ordered society. <laughs> you know, it's that's like... when I realized that this was the best episode I ever seen in the show. <laughs> it's it's so bad it shoots the moon, and I'm like, okay, we're playing a drinking game, and I'm like, I've, I've been of two minds about this. Like when the show tries to take itself seriously, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. When it's when it's embracing the cheese. Um, it's as I'm okay with it, but this time it's just gone so far off the fucking deep end. I don't understand where, why I'm out of question words. It's just, (laughs) (laughs) we need to invent a new one. Yes. Wait, that's still a word. Damn it. Qua? Qua? We'll just go to other languages. I'm sure Japanese has some weird question words. I don't know. Um, so the the sum of the plot is that Willow is getting catfished because the demon is in the computer. And... <laughs> yeah, this episode is like half very special episode, half like nineteen ninety three like X Men comic where they go into the Matrix. Well, except they don't ever have to go into the computer, and I really like that they didn't go for that crap because they would have had really bad sets. And the like acting was terrible. Like some lawnmower man type bullshit. Ooh. Like some Tron bullshit. I don't think they could afford either of those. <laughs> That's very true. Even though, like, lawnmower man was, I mean. That okay, was... so you know, in Community, when they go into the Imaginatorium or whatever the fuck it is, and it's just like you know a grid on a closet. Mm-hmm. That's what it would have been. That's exactly what it would have been. <laughs> But instead, they spent all that money on a Robo Demon costume, which is rad as hell. Oh my god, I love that fucking costume. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> you were not expecting that costume, or you're not expecting me to like it? Uh, we'll go with both. <laughs> I yeah. I am a huge cosplay fan, and that costume designer needs a raise. Like yeah. that costume designer, and and I liked that it was a costume. It was not a robot. It was not CG. It was mm-hmm. not stop motion. It was a dude in a costume. And because it was a dude in a costume, it looked really cool. Yes. I kind of actually wanted, while I was watching it this go round, I really wanted him to, like, take off his head and have one of the, one of his, one of his zombie boys in there, like, super zombied out, though, and just, like, with blank eyes and him put his, his like, CPU processor helmet back on and be like, yes, I'm just using this puppet in order to, you know, move about. And I'll have to refresh him every so often, but it's well worth it so that I can be corporeal again. No, I prefer him just a, a giant chunk of metal that's built from scraps. But we're, we're way the fuck well, ahead of ourselves. Well, fuck you. We, we are. Can we talk? Give me about, my dream. Can we talk about the computer zombies? Because... I think this Fritz guy is my favorite character in any television show ever. Is he the one who just kind of glowered the whole time with a scar over his hold, lip? Hold on. I've, I've got the script up, and uh, his quote is, The printed page is obsolete. Information isn't bound up anymore. It's an entity. The only reality is virtual. If you're not jacked in, you're not alive. Did everyone go to high school with this guy, <laughs> or is it just me? I... Uh... Well, I went to military school, so no. Um, I'm a, I, I'm just a touch older than you, Sweetling. So, um, yeah, the, that guy didn't exist yet. But we, we were in high school at this very time in the 90s. And, yes. uh, yeah, they, they were predicting a thing. They were predicting a type of personality. It, um, it's, yeah. it's not even the computerness. It's just the guy who's way too intense. And he's, like, intense because it thinks it makes him cool and tough. Like, this this guy says it like he's a shell-shocked, like, war hero or like a, uh, like a jaded veteran of a war from a far distant dystopian future. 
Well, he's been playing text-based RPGs uh, for like the last nine hours. Oh, he's been oh, playing so... Zork. Yeah, yeah. He was probably playing a mud. Let's let's be honest. Yeah, he's, he was he's playing he's, Minecraft. He's... For sure. Mine, but, well, if it was, it if it was today, it didn't exist yet. <laughs> Runescape. I'm sorry, Runescape. That's what he was playing. If it was today, this guy would be on Reddit talking about GamerGate. So oh, yeah. let's be real. Ooh, yeah. I'm surprised he didn't, you know, find some way to mention how all girls are whores. Um. So I, I, I did feel bad for Dave. Yeah, poor Dave. Like. Now, is Dave the one who was carving the M into his arm, or was that Fritz? That was Fritz. Dave was the one who killed himself. Right. Only he only he didn't. Fritz killed him. Oh, yeah. Well, we thought he killed himself. and they, uh, That, that uh, suicide note was so convincing that I almost thought Dave did it himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that was the thing that I really felt bad for Dave about. I feel like he if he had gotten to pen his own suicide note, there there would have been more to it, you know. At least maybe some some... Some metaphor, some simile, some some you know writing craft. Maybe a haiku. He like, yeah, he seemed like a thoughtful guy, you know. <laughs> I, mine would totally be a limerick, so. Yeah, there once was a girl from Nantucket. Ah, I'm gonna die now. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So we have these two dudes, and of course Willow. This is the first time Willow's like actually has something to do in the plot, although it's she doesn't seem to really have any agency. Um, no, not at all. And she's uh, so sweet. She is. And she's. She finds her agency at the end. She's like, "No, you don't love me. This isn't love. Fuck you." And then she beats him down with a fucking uh, a fire extinguisher. What is which... it with fire extinguishers and TV shows we watch, bitches? What is it? Why? Why are they always percussive? Why? Why? Why are people always trying to use them as as a weapon of some sort? They are meant for one thing. But it's. I think my favorite moment was when she shows up in the locker room, and Buffy is like, "Where you been? It's fifth period." And she's like, "Oh, I overslept, or I was talking with Moloch." And I'm like, "Girl, we all been there. You were masturbating till one p.m." <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for a better laugh out of that. So. Well, it's really awkward thinking about 15-year-old Willow masturbating. Yeah, she sorry. Only... <laughs> she might be 16 at this point, but she's still but she still dresses like the softer side of Sears, so it's really awkward. She she looks really young. Oh my and god, I... that jingle is in my head now. I hate you. What jingle? Yeah, I did Come that on Come see the softer side of Sears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um so the mind virus. And so but Buffy is she's in her gym clothes, but then she changes into she's got like a black T shirt and I couldn't tell it was it a dragon or a unicorn or a um a seahorse on that black T shirt. I thought it was a kitten. Was it a kitten? It was very Grace Adler. She so, changes her outfits a lot in this. She which is really not does. Something. And I've I've been paying attention to the fashion now that like um you know, I have some pros to tell me what to look for. And that fucking skirt with the blue velvet. And I, re- I, I have very bad memories about that cheap velvet stuff that they tried to push on us in the 90s. And everyone had at least one shirt that was made of that, except for you, bitches. I know you didn't. Uh, I think my grandma bought me one, and I refused to wear it. Yeah. I had yeah. one that was like red and white stripes, and I looked like Waldo. Oh, um, but it was oh. it, they were so uncomfortable, and they looked kind of, they looked kind of shimmery, but they were just not okay. And she's and... like a fucking can of RC cola. <laughs> that sounds delicious. <laughs> you want to drink, Buffy? Now you're just as bad as Angel. And she's how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> My head is not nearly that big. It's true. You do not have the crow magnum brow. Ah, uh, okay. So, <laughs> so she starts to think that something's up, and I forget what kind of like turned her on to something's weird here. Well, she's afraid of the internet, also. Mm, okay, well, no, she's afraid of guys who don't like who you have no evidence are actually, you know fellow 16-year-old boys and could very well be a serial killer from Nantucket. Yeah. She's super worried about men with hairy backs. Well, you know. Well, that's what happened to Natasha. <laughs> As a man with a hair. hairy back, yeah. uh, I'm 
I I object to this stereotype, and it's. I, it's it's not – she says maybe he's a circus performer. Maybe he's an axe murderer. I'm like, no, maybe he's like 30% of the men out there. <laughs> like, she, might... she makes a really awkward joke about a midget and a block of ice, which uh, I did not care for. <laughs> no, that was – that was like even back then, that was not okay. Um, yeah, so she's worried about Willow uh, sort of cyber dating this dude. Um, and this was – like, they have webcams, so I'm surprised pixelated pictures of her tits didn't float out on the internet. How do we know that they didn't? Because, like, that would be a thing, and I would be able to find it if I Google it. Wait, what are we looking for? <laughs> Repeat to yourself, it's just a show, and the Sunnydale internet is not accessible by our Earth internet. Okay, so Willow is in love with a guy on the internet, which is a thing that happened. Well, he's so sensitive. Right, and he's she's totally forgotten about Xander at this point, which is okay because Xander is such a douche muffin that I don't even care. He's the worst in this episode. He's not even there in the episode. He's the only person who is not there more than he is is Cordelia, who yeah, does not Cordelia's... make it. A... Well, Angel's I'm... not this either. I'm still stuck on douche muffin, you guys. Like, what the even hell? Anyway. Wait, you're you're not a fan of douche muffin? <laughs> oh yeah, that's the name of my other band. How did you know? Oh, sweet. Yeah, we're we're playing at the Roxy like Saturday. It's gonna be amazing. No, you're playing at the Bronze. Of course. <laughs> oh, my because favorite teen against... hangout spot. And he really wants to go to the Bronze. <laughs> That's that's basically his only contribution to this episode is wanting to go to the bronze and the he brown. He really panel. wants people to pay attention to him. I know. I do you remember yeah. that guy in high school, who was like, oh, I, oh, oh, I was this guy in high school. That's why I hate Xander so much. <laughs> okay. Look at me. I learned to juggle. Damn it. All those hours. Yeah, let's come to the bronze. I'll be super witty and funny. No, you won't, Xander. Shut up. Actually, that was the one part, like when he said, I'm going to make fun of people who won't talk to me. And I'm like, okay, Xander, now I feel you. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we've been that, there. That was me yeah. in high school. That was all of us. That's why we're here. And that's what we're doing right now is making fun of people who want nothing to do with us. Yeah, fuck you, Sh- Sarah Michelle Geller. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I could score with her, just saying. I'm pretty sure you have, you liar. Because <laughs> you, you do live in L.A. <laughs> Well, and, and as we all know, everyone in L.A. has had sex with Sarah Michelle Gellar. No, just <laughs> no. Uh, bitches. Just, just is, bitches. Bitches. Just, the, the, the term I use is she dives into her pussy vault like Scrooge McDuck. So. Oh, that's right. I've heard that. I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I just kind of have a way. I don't know what keeps happening, but yeah. Um, anyway, enough about my prowess. Um <laughs> So, okay, moving moving forward, where the hell were we? Um, We've established Buffy's that Willow, uh, yeah, Xander wants to go to the bronze. Buffy's worried, so she stalks. I don't, I kind of lost the thread as why they, why they went to CRD. Um, she was following one of the zombie boys around because she was, like, suspicious. Okay. And... Wait. Yeah, I thought... let's let's not forget Buffy's sweet incognito outfit, which is a oh trope I God. will never ever ever get tired of. That was the <laughs> when I when I was looking at the episode on Netflix, that was the image was her with the pink ass sunglasses and that brown fuzzy blanket coat. <laughs> it looks way too hot. Like I don't know when this is supposed to be taking like place. You know, here's, here's, a, here's a thing about Rancho Cucamonga. It's always hot. It is out in the desert. Uh, okay, so they're not actually in Rancho Cucamonga. They're essentially in Santa Barbara, and it does get, you know, breezy there, so they're, she's probably fine. Um, and as far as her outfit goes, I was sitting here watching it with girlfriend, and she's, like, hollering at the TV. That is not inconspicuous at all. You have sparkles on your sunglasses. <laughs> like absolutely losing our shit about it yeah, this is like in the ninja turtles movie when Raphael goes off on his own and he just puts on a fedora and trench coat over his turtleness yes yes i loved that i mean they did that in the cartoons too but eventually they got rubber masks but yeah Raphael totally thought he was being totes inconspicuous well, which is how he would 
That's how he would say it, too. Well, at least she didn't, like, have Xander stand on her shoulders and, like, the two of them wear, like, an oversized trench coat. At least she wasn't, like, six raccoons in a trench coat. <laughs> Only six? Well, then Sarah Michelle Gellar is, is very small, so, yeah, I can see the six of them. She's a, she's a yeah. small lady. Yeah, she's she's teeny tiny, so, yeah. Um, so they've, they discover that something, something funny is going on at CRD. So I couldn't tell if like the entire company had been overtaken by the internet demon. Um, cause they didn't seem to run into anyone who was not into it. They covered it in the show, actually. Uh, Xander and his weird monologue about what happened to the company when he like knows a thing for once. Um, yeah, they, they were the Sunnydale's third largest employer until they went out of business like spontaneously, I'm sure that was great for the town. Um, and so it had just been kind of sitting there all empty, but you know all the junk's still in there. So that's why the the zombie boys decided to take it over and and build their masterwork there. At least I think that's what happened. They they don't they don't get really into how the zombie boys take control of of the company, but it was I I, I distinctly remember Xander saying that they had gone out yeah and xander is like what can't i know anything my uncle was a janitor and uh giles is like well it's just very unprecedented for you to know anything which is a sweet (laughs) giles burn yeah Yeah. giles giles burn was on point but there was also some burns at giles from computer teacher whose name i did not catch the miss calendar Calendar. which i and i kind of that dreadful calendar woman i'm kind of glad she didn't get eaten because I was a little afraid of her, and God, her makeup is amazing. She I, is a regulation hottie. I I don't know what it is. Like they can't afford good writers, but like the best makeup artists in the business are working for them. <laughs> yeah, from the script, angle to reveal, Miss Calendar, computer teacher, and Giles polar opposite. She's maybe thirty, pretty, hip, and irreverent. Hip is stretching it. <laughs> well, I don't know. She's got that uh, that corkscrew uh, knot earring. It's pretty oh hip, right? Oh my god! Yeah, I'm still thinking about that. Whoa. I'm hot for I'm hot for teacher guys. Hot for teacher. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you people uh, are gross. I spend my I spend my life trying to make you make that sound. Um, so she's, she's decided that everything's going to be digital and they're scanning all these books and, um, but she turns out to be on their, are are we getting ahead of ourselves? She's. No, um, they, they eventually figure out that the demon is inside the machine and they also figure out, I'm not sure how anymore cause I kind of blanked out, uh, cause it was dull, but they also figure out that the demon is Willow's boyfriend. Um, Mostly because it's mad creepy. Oh, yeah, and they try to kill uh, Buffy. They try to kill Buffy, and that's how she figures it out. So. Oh, that's right, because, like, and I noticed this when she goes into the shower, like, Willow's in the shower, and the wire is broken, but there's only one wire going to that light bulb, and it's broken, so I don't know why the light is on, and I don't know where the electricity is coming from. Um, also, Buffy is wearing... Uh, Normally, I'd be okay with that sky blue. It's kind of um, – I'll bet Natasha is wearing that eyeshadow right the fuck now. Probably. But it, like, once again, it is velvet, but this time it is shiny. So you look like you skinned a fucking My Little Pony doll to make that goddamn shirt. That's how I make my shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The cloud part that was on its butt, that's the back piece. I, right? If she's, if she's going to go with these weird materials and and – odd colors she needs to go full muppet like she needs to stop half-assing it i'm just gonna keep my teeth together right now yeah we can't talk about muppets the first rule of muppetry is don't talk about muppets (laughs) anyway so okay so um moving on yes but and, and also i pointed this out on facebook like no rubber soles that thick she's not getting electrocuted she's fine. that's what i was saying oh my god i was shouting that it's like she's fine she's grounded she could walk around there she could jump up and down and splash she's not she, grounded that's the point whatever point being she she's immune to electricity through the power of science through the power of soul 
Oh, God. Okay. Damn it, yeah. Owen. <laughs> now you have to be mad at him. I'm mad, I get at, a point back I'm mad at I'm mad at you. I'm mad at him. I'm mad at Natasha. I'm mad at all the patrons for wanting this show. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna say I don't. I, I did not like this show, uh, but I'm super excited to give it a second chance and to see if it gets better because of you know this podcast. So well, thank you. It's That's very better. entertaining to listen to. We're, we're guiding you through the dark times and admitting that it's bad, which is better than you're ever going to get from, from regular Buffy fans. Yeah. Most of them will admit that it's bad, but like our freaking patrons will force you to power through the first season. I, I, I wanted to just do a megasode covering the first season and then move on to the stuff that, yeah. Anyway, I'll stop my rant. Right I don't now. know. We we tried the Megasode treatment to the Star Wars prequels, and that ended really bad. Maybe binging this this first season would have killed you, Chris. It might have. Um, and then bitches would have all my stuff. So yay! Oh, that's why she. That's why she <laughs> wanted to do that. He has uh, some really great stuff too. But but is it after this that uh, that computer geek number two kills himself? I think so. Yeah, because he's. Can, he fails because he can't bring himself to actually do it. Can, can we talk about um, the blatant HAL 9000 uh, ripoff that, that is the computer voice? What I, uh, what I want to talk about is why are they talking to the computer? Yeah, that's what I mean. There's no microphone. There, I think there's only a left speaker. I saw Wait, one you... speaker on top of the monitor. But you don't talk to yourself while you type the entire sentence? I really don't. I, I scream curse words. <laughs> but because I think he literally says, I'm afraid I can't do that, Dave. Did he say that? That would not surprise me. Cause... I think he said something. I'll have to let – me, let me look. Sometimes they have to make references because it's fun. Um <laughs> Oh, it's definitely fun. This is one of the funniest scenes in this episode. I love how when he writes, when, when the computer man, when Moloch, like, writes the suicide note, he does an impression of Dave for no reason. He oh. he takes on a higher pitch, like he's doing a bad impression of him. Yeah, because he's a spiteful little shit of a demon. Okay, spiteful big shit of a demon. Um, I like that he had to open up Notepad to do it. He couldn't do it in Word. <laughs> I don't think they had Word back then. I think it was still... Nope, uh, they had it. I was in a computer science class that year. Really? Yeah, yeah Word you was had Word. Uh-huh. It, it was, was crappy the, Word. Yeah, it was, one, it was Word, but it was better than fucking Works. Yeah, so, I, I, did, I thought it was still Works at that point, but... No, we had the first incarnation of Word, and it was, it was like writing with a pen after only, like, sticks of charcoal. My, my favorite... Um, oxymoron is Microsoft Works. Come on, that was funny. Womp womp. You're fired. <laughs> you you just okay. All all the mad at us you just had. You you have to shut up now. You I know. don't I don't have any other ammo because this. Oh my god, this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, can I tell my Microsoft joke? Yes, you're telling your Microsoft okay. joke. Is it about paper clips? No. Okay, so um, Yumi and Tex are in a helicopter, or Tex Money. Yumi and Money are in a helicopter, right? And we get picked up by a tornado, and it flings us someplace. And we could be anywhere. We don't know where the hell we are. So we fly around until we see a city. And we fly toward the city because, you know, it's a city. And we're like, oh, my God, we can't land anywhere. There's no fucking helipads. Then we see the tallest building. We're like, at least we can find out where we are. So you write out a sign. Where are we? And you hold it up, and the people in, in the building, like, see us, and they're like, oh, cool, a sign. And so they answer us, and they say, you are in a helicopter. And all of a sudden, money knows exactly where we are. We're in Seattle, because that's the Microsoft building, because the answer to the question is technically true, but absolutely useless. Womp womp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great joke. Fuck you all. <laughs> I it's, I may have to show you the email thread I have with Microsoft and trying to get their fucking Xbox One controller to work with my PC. I so, um, are you in Europe? Do you need an adapter? It's all all I need is an older driver, but they they are 
baffled on how to get me that. Um, email. Dropbox. I think, I think you mean e-letter, <laughs> as we learned from this episode. E-letter. Holy shit. There, I forgot about that. I, I was listening to a different podcast on this to, you know, prepare, and uh, someone did a super us. cut. Uh, yeah, I did. I'm sorry. I, I did feel a little dirty doing it. Like, I had to be like, okay, don't make any of the jokes that they made, uh, which is you fine because none of the – such a slut. N- none of the other podcasts I found on this were any good, so don't feel bad. Uh, okay. That's that's my hot take on all the other Buffy podcasts. Um, Man, they're going to kick your ass later. Yeah, but that's a competitive game. Um, but someone did a supercut of all the different, like, terrible, like – techno terms that they use in this episode because there's like e-letter and there's that part where buffy's talking to dave about how to uh track down someone who sent an email it's it's amazing (sighs) yeah i just i just kind of relaxed my brain and let it happen to me (laughs) so where were we (laughs) Uh, Dave yeah. just hung himself. Dave just hung himself. And Buffy I... wants to know if her hair is okay because she got electrocuted because that's hilarious. And it's really not. It's really not. I like the late nineties. Um, we hadn't, we hadn't gotten to like Willow has some strangely ahead of its time, like flat, tameable, early aughts hair, and right. it's it's a nice auburn Sansa Stark color. Uh, Buffy, on the other hand, has it like. Um, kind of puffed up in front it's well, it's almost televangelist hair okay so the reason her hair is bad is because she just got electrocuted I no mean, it was like that the whole episode oh yeah well most of the time she has she has better hair and this episode was pretty rough on her and 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 fashion and hair i did not notice any of the fashion because um boobs. because you're not a gay man that's why <laughs> yeah I, that's that's true. I'm definitely not a gay man. And I I just I'm amazed at the the sheer volume of coats she has for someone who lives in um, Southern California. Because after this, she changes. She goes full Cruella <laughs> with the the Dalmatian velvet. <laughs> and I just can't. I just can't. I had to pause it. I had to go get more wine. I'm like, why is this a thing? Who, <laughs> who, somebody designed this. Somebody picked this out. Somebody put this on and thought it looked good on her. Somebody did this to her. Those were several somebodies. And just the chain of bad decisions and it's how. Okay, it was really low budget, and there are a lot of really terrible thrift stores around. So you know, you you, you make do. You make do. Okay, so she's wearing this stupid <laughs> Cruella coat when they decide to go to CRD and rescue Willow. Uh, but we we skipped over the part where Moloch pops up on the screen in his demon form God. and says, leave Willow alone! And he sounds like a mopey teenager. Yeah. Stop talking to my girlfriend! Yeah, I'm on Reddit. <laughs> he was so pixelated. Oh. Yeah, oh, oh man, all the webcam stuff in this is so terrible. Like the part where it like looks from the webcam point of view at Buffy and looks up her uh her student record. Uh yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. But what I want to know is just as money wants to know whether or not Willow's pixelated boobs are on the Sunnydale internet, I want to know if there's a uh Mole of Dick pic. I mean, yeah, that's what and, Chris was hoping for. I, w- I was really... If there is, is it horny? Like, does it have little spikes? Is it made of stone? Um, it's is just it a hard drive. color scheme? Oh, God. Because <laughs> I already said three and a half inch floppy, so you couldn't. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. Okay, now I don't care anymore. <laughs> so... <laughs> I... <sighs> and is this the point where we get the Joss Whedon cameo? On the news? Was there one? I didn't even notice. I don't even remember the news. Yeah, the I news is... Pl- out at this point. In the background of this whole episode, 
there's just like you know there's the kid whose uh, computer paper turned into how Nazi Germany is a perfect model of a well organized society, uh-huh. and yeah. there which um. And then there's oh, like, oh, your student you're record about. didn't say that you were allergic to penicillin. I guess you're going to die. And there's something and, about, like, nuclear codes for nuclear missiles or something. No, that, w- that was what uh, – so Buffy and Giles were talking about all the things that Moloch could fuck up by being master of the internet. And, you know, Buffy's like, uh, nuclear weapons. And then Giles said something else, and Buffy's like, hello, I think I capped it off. And he's like, you're right, yours was better, which was – classic i thought that was brilliant but yeah there were all these news reels in the background about how like you know um the stock market was doing fucked up shit and all all, pretty much anything that could be messed up by computers was being messed up and apparently joss whedon was in there somehow please explain yeah i think he's the newscaster i i wasn't like this was on my rewatch which was actually a re-listen at work but uh, on one of the podcasts, they were saying that it was Joss Whedon as one of the people in that scene on the TV. Mm. Yeah. And this is presumably like pre-baldness uh, Joss Whedon, which looks super weird. Yeah, I can't picture that. No. Yeah, I don't know what – I I had never learned what Joss Whedon looked like until like – I think on the first episode I asked, wait, he actually wrote the original – Movie script, how old is the man? So I Googled him, and that's the first time I'd ever seen him. And he looks like, um, I don't he, know. He looks he, like Woody Harrelson's older brother. He looks like a, yeah, he looks like uh, Louis C.K.'s little cousin. Okay. Yeah, just kind of boring, boring white dad. Yeah. Like, not ex- he doesn't look like Louis C.K.'s brother. But he looks like someone who would be at the Thanksgiving table at like the far end. Okay. Not carving. He's not not carving. No, you would is, not give that guy a knife. Is he the one who can't hold down a job and drinks too much and always picks you up from the airport? Now he's the one who's an accountant that like you always forget his name even though you've seen him every Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's but that. he really, but he really likes your mom's biscuits. Oh yeah, he like hogs those biscuits. Yeah. And he mentions it every time. Like every yeah. that's the only thing he ever says to is like your mom making biscuits. Yeah, the, he tries to make that like his playful thing. Like I hope your mom made biscuits. And he even talks about it at like other family gatherings. He's like, well, yeah. see you at Thanksgiving. Hope your mom makes those biscuits. And you're like, ha ah, ha ha ha. And then you just turn away. Yeah, it's like awkward. You're 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 weird. You're my weird cousin. <laughs> I I don't like you. Yeah. But if you've yep. ever if you've ever seen interviews of him from like Buffy era, he looks basically the same except for like fifty pounds thinner and like he's wearing a hairpiece of the most stereotypical like nineties perfectly parted hair. Oh. It's 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 quite a thing to see. I can't wait to look it up later. Oh, In fact it, that might be the show pick. It's a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Robo Demon. No, a picture of Joss Whedon with his terrible. I want hair. that Robo Demon. Can we go? Like, do you know where? Can this we film? talk about the Robo Demon now? No. Can we? Can do you know where this was filmed so we can go like look in the dump and see if we can find it? Because that, um, I think I think we need to get there. So probably like, Burbank. They, they go to CRD and they break in because Willow has been captured at this point. Well, yeah, and you know. That's her purpose in this in this one. It's so funny that like the computer genius gets like has no no purpose except to be the princess in the computer episode. What the fuck, guys? Uh, yeah, Joss still needed to unlearn a lot of uh, tropes before he became the uh, pseudo feminist he is today. Oh wow. That, there, there's a lot in there. I don't know if we can unpack it all right now. Yeah, You're gonna have I to expand this, on that in another episode. This needs its own episode. Well, you, you've, I, uh, if you've been listening to Alias at all, like I have a tendency to go off on particular directors. So, um, we talked about uh, what's his face just yesterday. Oh yeah, Quentin Tarantino, the, the the Quentin guy. Oh yeah, I've I've gone off on uh, James Cameron and Clint Eastwood and a couple others too. So. Well, Clint deserves your scorn. Oh, Clint is Clint is a garbage person. So, <laughs> tell us and how not, you really feel, and not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> he 
Is there a good way to be a garbage person? Well, it's it's a it's an honorable civil service job that kind of gets a lot of flack. Okay, yeah, that's true. Without without trash that's, collectors, that's, where yeah, would we be? Yeah, he's a person made of garbage. Oh, like Pizza that, the Hut. Exactly like Pizza the Hut. Like the the Golgothan in um, uh, what's it called? Oh, brother. Oh, the shit demon. Yeah. Uh, has that has that movie aged well? Has anyone no. gone off on Kevin Smith yet? Because that movie fucking sucks. I've. The sad thing is that's the best of his movies. Mm. I we ha- we have gone off on Kevin Smith and. Um, good, good. And but Will again. Did you, did you talk shit about his uh, hockey jerseys? No. What's what I I find it hard to talk shit about support. Kevin Smith because I think he knows he's a terrible director. Oh, he does. He definitely knows that. That's not what. And I think I it. think he really like he he still can't. I think he knows he's so bad at it, and he can't believe that he keeps getting work. And he's like, he just he really wants to sell action figures of Jay and Silent Bob and talk about Batman on a podcast. He doesn't like. He's like, I'm not good at this, guys. Leave me alone. Uh, as as the comic fan, um, that's why I hate Kevin Smith more than anything else. Comic book men is a fucking travesty. Okay, that's fair. I don't know enough about comics, so. Um, all right, Robo Demon. <laughs> so Robo Demon is they have built one out of it looks like tubing and uh, random metal pieces. There, were, I don't think there was a single computer part in that. Did you guys see Superman three? Of course. There's I a, haven't. There's a part where a woman gets turned into a computer person, and this is yes. how I imagine it looks. <laughs> and when I was seven, that was by far the most terrifying thing I'd ever seen. Just yeah, thinking I, about I've it. Heard that from a, a lot thrill. of people. <laughs> a thrill of terror through my body. Oh man, um, was how shocked were you in this, Chris? Because I was not expecting this to be. Where I was, was not going. expecting it either, but I was pleasantly surprised. At first, I thought, "Why is he wearing a mask?" I'm like, "Oh, they built him a body," and then it kind of zooms out and it shows the entire. Like, someone really loved this project. Yeah, someone worked really hard with a very low budget. And made something decent looking. Like, sure, it looks a little bit like the bad guy of a Bible Man movie, but I mean, you know, I, I put don't a lot think, of work in there. I don't think the bad guy in a Bible Man movie would put that kind of care into it because that that is something that it looks like a real cosplayer made. It looks like very good cosplay. Yeah, and it's like um, I've, I've I love cosplay. I've got a lot of pictures of it. That's I, I kind of feel like this guy, maybe he's the guy who did the 8-bit Samus cosplay. Ooh, I haven't seen that. I'll have to send you a picture, but some guy did, like, he did one that, like, it looks like it's made of Minecraft blocks. Nice. I've seen Minecraft cosplay, and that's pretty neat. Yeah, but that's... Uh, but, but Samus is way cooler than Minecraft. Yeah, that's going that retro. But, yeah, so I was I was actually feeling for the demon. Like, I don't know what his thing about breaking his minions' necks is. Um, that was never really explained, but then he puts the claws on Willow, and it seems like he honestly, at this point, has feelings for her. Oh, I'm yeah, telling... he, he legit loves his minions, just, like, not as people, more like as pets. I, it's, I, I felt like I, whoever whoever was doing the voice acting did a really good job, because I was like, wait, he, he seemed genuinely hurt when Willow told him to fuck off. He does, but I really like how after he finally considers it, he's just like, hmm, pity. And then he's just like, okay, you're going to die now. I'm, also, I, I'm There's surprised. other fish in the sea. I'm surprised Willow did not hesitate a little more after seeing how those claws are shaped. Um, uh, uh, that would not be fun, just saying. They were, yeah. they were rounded, and I'll bet they vibrate, so... Um, they, they not might rounded vibrate. nearly enough. But, Aren't okay, they segmented? So, as, as the expert in this one, let me tell you, those do not look fun. <laughs> okay. Those do not look even a little fun. I will trust you on that. Um, I, I really like how he's saying, like, it, it's such a weird non sequitur. He's like, there's a man in Singapore paying a man in Poland to kill his mom. Good for him. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, I wish he had been the big bad of this season. Is Jack so Kevorkian Polish? <laughs> uh, sure. It was a Swiss bank account, guys. Oh, Back off of Poland. Right. Back off of Poland. Okay. I'm, I'm and, sorry to our Polish listeners. Yeah, 
you're you're absolutely right that this is a far more compelling vil- villain than um, the master. The master is is terrible, and I hate him. But looks cool. I'll give him that. Wait. So the master. Kind of, the master looks like shit. Wait, his no, I'm thinking look of like assholes. I'm thinking the of pre-digital looks- Moloch, who is in the intro, right? Yeah. Because we didn't talk about the intro. The intro is the best part of every episode up until season two, right? Uh, kind of, yeah. I like that part where it goes, wah! It's a good part. Are you okay over there? <laughs> like, did you just have a stroke? I, I have. Uh, so okay. it's, the episode ends because uh, Buffy sees a high-voltage box. and uh, oh, this is oh, wait, we, for, we, forgot the, uh, we forgot the um, computer teacher summons a coven of techno-pagans <laughs> around the country and knows enough of them that they can form a circle where um, they are part of it, and they manage to cast it out into, I'm assuming, is a five-and-a-quarter floppy disk. No, they just trap him in his body. They oh. trap him in his ram, his own ram. Like a rock. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> yeah, stop so that. if he had rebooted even once, he would have lost himself. Yeah. Oh. They should have just pressed the reboot button on him. I know, right? But instead I mean, they'd have him punch a fucking electric box that was so lame. But he he's like one of those new monitors where you can't find the button. Yeah, it's, like, recessed into, like, a back corner that doesn't yeah. even have, like, a seam. Yeah, so you can't, like, just find it with your hands. Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah, you got to feel along the edge. So you just and have to punch your electrical box? <laughs> yeah, and, and instead of power, you're, like, just turning the, the uh, menu on and off. So it's like, I don't want to adjust the color, god damn you! <laughs> uh, my monitor has that problem. I try to turn it off, and it... Uh, and it changes to TV, so I don't know why it has a TV antenna hookup. Um, so it gives that that snow with the. Oh my god! Is that, that still a thing you can punch. see? Yes, uh, it's, it wow. takes it takes it a minute to catch on and turn it to a blue screen. That's weird. Oh, wow. Yeah. Snow still have it. Wow, we could still have the poltergeist. Well, this this monitor, like surprise, is from about 1999, and it's. Surprisingly sturdy, so. Well, it's yeah, because it's built to last. Yeah. Yeah, not, so, like those, not like those damn computers of today. You're turning it into a real Giles. <laughs> and the episode ends with the the poor demon is destroyed, and I was very sad. I hope that they kept that outfit intact. And well, well yeah, Xander's Xander, going to try it on later. Xander really wants to go to the bronze because we have not been there for the entire episode. And it's so cool. And he mentions the praying mantis and I'm like, good, somebody remembers something. Yeah, I like that the the episode ends with the teenagers realizing, oh no, we're characters in a Joss Whedon show, so we're just doomed to ever escalating romantic uh, tragedies. (laughs) Yes. And they laugh and they laugh and then they go, oh. Um, and, and and we didn't talk about uh, Giles maybe getting a date. Yeah, yeah, they're the original odd couple. She's a techno pagan who performs rituals on the internet. He's a stockholder in Borders Books. How will they learn to find love? Okay, so I thought it was kind of weird that Giles wasn't more surprised that she knew some like arcane bullshit. Like, why wasn't he, like, why the hell do you know about Moloch the Betrayer? Or the, I don't know, the Unclean, or whatever the fuck his... I I just, I I couldn't believe a reaction like that from Giles, because he has a book on everything. He has a book on the very specific vampires. Like, last episode, he had a book on the three. He had a book on Angel. Oh, yeah. There is, like, he has either, he has collected, there are scribes who write books about particular vampires. And... Um, watchers. Uh, yeah. Okay, so when you're in watcher training, you have to write a thesis. <laughs> and, yeah, so they, they pick, you know, their favorite vampire, and they write theses on them. Someone dig up Darla's book, because I want to read that. Did he not I have a book on Darla anything. last episode? I'm not. I'm going to sit over here quietly. Okay. 
Uh, so he didn't mention Darla. He did mention Angel. But we are we are at the end, and I kind of didn't understand the earring thing. Oh, she thank she God! Didn't... I'm glad it wasn't just me. With okay. My, my my naive she, small town. Notes. She says it's not for her ear. I don't know what that means. Oh, well, she yeah. said she. That's not where she wears it. So yeah. should she wear it in her belly button and her clit? Where? Who's to say? It's it's meant to to make him think about all the different things she could hang something, and then and then she knows that he's thinking about her body. That's yeah. the point. It's so titillating. It's probably for a nipple. Okay. So that it has seems been like a weird shape. Is it just me? It's probably a pendant. Fuck, guys. <laughs> the point is not the actual jewelry. The point is that she tricked him into thinking about her naked. Well, okay. she just she made me think about her hanging it from her Satan's doorbell. So, <laughs> which is not I thought good about for that anyone too. involved. Mm-hmm. Does it bug anyone else that she's like thirty and he's like fifty? No, because that's what they do. They less like they think that men should receive young women as as a prize for turning fifty. <laughs> as as a prize for being afraid of computers and girls. Yeah. Because he's is, eight years old. This is an attitude that is shockingly common in um in the entertainment world. So oh. like I mean, like Jack Nicholson was making a movie and Maggie Gyllenhaal at thirty seven they told her she was too old to play his girlfriend. Ugh. What? Yeah. But Maggie Gyllenhaal is a goddess, and I want to worship at her altar. Yes. Yeah, she's okay. Shut up, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, that was our episode, and I wanted to, in the spirit of uh, Unspoiled, bring back uh, the fun little puzzle games that we play. <gasps> oh, the God. fun little puzzle man that hasn't been a thing in so long i know uh so it's it's retro friday this game is called money the stupid ass first name slayer oh god okay in, in the spirit of buffy i am going to, uh the answer to all of these questions is someone with a very stupid first name we and ready someone with a this, stupid first name i, I awful, support this this seems awfully subjective Okay, so the first one's kind of a giveaway. This is a very common name for bougie white people to name their uh, little girls, and it is Heaven spelled backwards. Never. Yay, that was easy. Okay, should we ring in somehow? Should we ring in with our names? No, name? just shout it out. We're not, shout bitches? We're not keeping, we're not keeping score. Bitches! <laughs> We are keeping score, and I'm winning. All right, fine. I'm writing a B by this one. All right. Uh, Our second one. This person is only four, but already has her own clothing line. Fuck. Uh, And let me know if you need a hint. Is it Northwest? No. Damn it. That was going to be my guess, but I couldn't remember her name. (laughs) Um, How do you forget that? Is it... uh, yeah, the the Mary Kate Olson. She's like bitch. She's thirty. Uh, she's older than you. Yeah, I guess she is. That's weird. I watched a lot of reruns of Full House. Um, I don't know. I don't know any four year olds. You need a hint. Yes. Yeah. Uh, both of her parents are Grammy award winning recording artists. Oh well, I'm why is it not Northwest? <laughs> is it the other West? Is it Southwest? No, what neither Kim nor kid? Kanye have a Grammy. Oh. I well, that's good. That. Okay, who's won a Grammy ever? I don't know. I give Natasha up. Natasha is going to run in the room and strangle you, Owen. I is swear she? to God. No, I'm, not, you're not. out of time. It's Blue Ivy. Oh, I don't know who that is. That's Beyonce and Jay-Z's daughter. Oh. Yeah, I'm so... Okay, it, I'm so out of touch with any music like that. Okay. I know every word of Hamilton, though. You'll you'll know this one. All right. Our third entry yeah. is this uh, 90s pop star from Great Britain used to be called Jerry Dorsey. Who is Hamilton? No. <laughs> used to be – 90s pop star from Britain used to be – 90s pop star from Britain? Used to be called and what? He's a stup- it used to be called Jerry Dorsey. That's his his given name. And he's stupid. How he's stupid? got a stupid first name. 
Uh, oh, Jerry's pretty bad. Um, I don't know. You guys are bad at this. Think Eddie is there. <laughs> Do I have to? Um, I my uh, my British nineties pop stars were all Spice Girls. All right, your, damn it. your time's up, Engelbert Humperdinck. Yeah, never gonna get that. Fuck you. Okay. <sighs> don't say that. I told you not to say that name. <laughs> This one you are going to get. Okay. Um, this two-year-old has a uh, recording artist. A recording <laughs> artist as one parent, and a video game designer as the other. I don't know two-year-olds. Why are you asking me about kids? Northwest. Yes, Northwest. Fuck. Hooray! I win. All right. Uh, You're right. Suck it, Owen. <laughs> This is incredibly unfair. <laughs> this, is, this daughter of a reality t- TV star uh, is named after a type of cigarette. Um, Virginia Can't... Slim Trump. And here's a, here's a further hint: the reality show star is from Alaska. Marlboro. Uh, uh, fucking, um, fucking, god damn it. <laughs> The, you know the the lady with the with the moose burgers. You're getting there, Owen. Come on, I know. Got I know. Uh, there it is, Bristol Palin. Bristol, Bristol. Oh my God! What did she name her kid then? I don't know what she named her kid. Okay, then how is that a cigarette? I'm so confused. Bristol is a type of cigarette. Since when? I smoke cigars. I smoked for eight years. I figure I knew them all. I worked at a gas station. You win. Okay. <laughs> All right. This uh, who tra- this person who tragically has not won an Oscar but deserves it. Her first name is a title of a a member of a royal family. Fucking Duchess of uh, Haverbash. No. Um. Uh. Prince. Man. Oh. <laughs> All I can think of is Madonna's kid, Lourdes, but she doesn't deserve <laughs> no. an Academy Award. Um, uh, title of royal family. Well, royal families are always queens, princes, and princesses. Okay. Your occasional so, voice viceroy. Okay. Um, so you're on to it. Okay. Um, I, I'm... Or, or All right, like, Queen Latifah. Up. There it is. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Woohoo! Good job. All right, this you're, you're on the board. This yes. son of a Republican. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why should Queen Latifah win an Academy Award? Have you Chicago? Ever oh, that's fair. Am- okay. She's amazing in everything yeah. I've ever seen her in. Are you kidding me? Well, the only movie I've seen her in is Taxi. Oh. Okay, this is why you aren't gay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, this son of a Republican candidate for president is named after a children's game. Uh, Twister. Um, <laughs> Candyland. <laughs> um, fucking Monopoly. Clue. Um, um, Clue Trump. I don't know uh, Trump kids' names. Operation? Um, uh, sorry? Wow, you guys are going so... <laughs> Eric. Boggle. Uh, <laughs> Donald Trump Jr. That's a board I'm, game, right? I'm I'm shutting you down. It's Tag Romney. <laughs> yeah, I was never Tag is not that. a board game. Tag is just a game. Did he say board game? Or did I didn't say, say board game. game. I just said children's game. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, but kids only play board games. Everyone knows that. I would, man, if I thought that way, I'd been like, Red Rover. <laughs> Minecraft gore. All right, this um, this British actor is named after what I like to have for brunch. Kate Beckinsale. Uh, brunch uh, bagels. Hugh Grant. <laughs> I'm shocked that neither of you went with Dick <laughs> yet. I don't I don't know any British actors with Dick, the name Dick. Yeah, yeah. Um, mimosas? You're getting close. 
Vodka Bellini. Oh, Bellinis God, are delicious. Badness. Um, <laughs> uh, what's the tomato beverage? Um, Bloody Mary, Scott? It's a... <laughs> Oh, for crying out, you two are never going to get it. Ben and Cumberdan- Cumberbatch. Oh. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> I may have eventually got that, actually. <laughs> you no. might have if you just started naming all the British actors who are currently relevant. So There's only seven at any given time. I don't know. I'm predicting uh, Doctor Strange is the first big Marvel flop. Okay. All right, so... This Republican candidate for president who never got the nomination is named after the worst author that 14-year-old boys love to read. Who is Jeb? No. Uh, Worst author. Well, it's fun to say. Uh, That 14-year-old boys love to read. 14-year-old boys boys don't love to read. Isn't that guy that wrote Catcher in the Rye? No. Okay, not Salinger. Okay. Um, Who wrote hmm? Captain Underpants? Uh, it's, here's another hint. The yes, the author is a woman. That 14-year-old boys love to read. Mm-hmm. This is some kind of trick. Wow. You of all people, bitches, should get this one. 14-year-old boys. I was never a 14-year-old boy. I just look like The one. answer is Rand Paul. Ayn Rand. Fourteen-year-old no. boys don't read Ayn Rand. They love them some Ayn Rand. That's so, like no. that's like seventeen to nineteen. Okay. I read Ayn Rand at fifteen. Oh. All right. So this uh, is this person uh, had a father who was very very crazy and is named after something you keep warm with in bed. Blanket. Very good. Ah oh, fuck. Um. <laughs> uh, He's making them easier because we're idiots. This 90s rock star is named after something you need to buy in the Oregon Trail. Um, bullets. Um, Axel. Axel! <laughs> there you go. Axel Shit. Willis. Well done. <laughs> I'm just like, hey? And this is the final one, and this one's fictional. Okay. Okay. This, this character... Uh, had an internal struggle to uh, on how to deal with racism and is named after something you put in your pancakes. Flour, butter, milk, um, syrup. Um, Fork. <laughs> chocolate chips. Uh, Blueberry. <laughs> bananas. Oh, Sir Owen? Oh, fuck. Strawberry. Uh, Strawberry Fields. No, that's not right. That's a James Bond character. Fuck. Um, Struggling with race. Uh, Hal Jordan. No. <laughs> no. And it's a character in something? What's he yeah, a character it's a fictional in? character who struggled with race. Who amongst us doesn't? Uh, I never saw American History X. Uh, t- this is a lot more accessible than American History X. Oh, good. Thank God. <laughs> oh, God, you guys are terrible at this. I'm, I'm glad Blueberry it... Finn. Oh. oh. Yeah, I never read it. I read it, but I stopped it in the middle because Twain is really, really not for me. All right, so that's our game, and the winner is... <laughs> Who cares? I got three. I totally won. Yeah, bitches cares, of course. We established this at the beginning. I am extremely competitive. That's why I don't play games, if I can help it. <laughs> because right. it brings out ugly things in me. That's why we had to cancel the Twister podcast. Oh. Based on the game, oh. not the movie. <laughs> the Twister the Twister Minute podcast was a failure from the first episode. You wouldn't want to play Twister with me anyway. I'm entirely made of limbs. Like, a, there's barely even a torso. And I'm hypermobile. I would own... I know. The woman can move like a snake. It's weird. Yeah. Uh. All right. So I think it's time that we don't have any new reviews. So I think it's time for some plugs. Why don't we let our guest star go first? 
Owen, do you have anything you want to plug? Sure. Uh, first and foremost, I am on several Unspoiled podcasts. Uh, right now, ongoing, we have Unspoiled Orphan Black and Unspoiled His Dark Materials, which is a lot of fun. Uh, we also, in the past, on iTunes, we've got uh, Unspoiled Walking Dead. I was on several seasons of that, and I was also on Unspoiled Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which is a really good show from the BBC that no one watched, and subsequently, very few people listen to the podcast on, but... It's on Netflix right now, and it's excellent, so you should check that out. Uh, I wanted also, to read the book first. <laughs> the book is also really good from what I heard, but um, I think the show and the book are very similar, and I've heard that the show is actually better. So. Oh, well, maybe I'll do that then. I, I highly recommend it. It's really good and looks really good for a BBC show. A lot of times their effects budgets aren't always great. Doctor but, Who. Uh, yeah, Doctor Who is my go-to for that, but... Uh, um, it's a really good show, so check it out. Um, also, my podcast, What's Going with Owen and Maggie, that I do with uh, a fellow co-host of Unspoiled, Maggie Binsby, is on iTunes, and the first five episodes are on there. So go listen to that. We talk about comic books and other nerdy shit like Star Wars and Simpsons and just, you know, nerd stuff. And lastly, there is the Unspoiled Gamers Den which is a Facebook page, Facebook group that we run, which is where gamers who listen to the podcast can come and talk about video games. Uh, okay, uh, money specifically, is on there. specifically video games and not, like, no tabletop in there? Oh, you can talk about that shit. Okay. No one really has yet, but, I mean, it's it's a free society. Basically, as long as you don't go in there and be an asshole to people, like, you can talk about whatever. Oh, sweet. So if you want to talk about uh, your your favorite D and D fourth edition class, um, I would be I would be very happy to join in on that uh, discussion. I have never actually D and D'd. I, I I got my start in Star Wars tabletop, and it oh. was amazing. Well, we've we've got a we've got a you need space. to you need to come on our show at some point and talk about Star Wars. I would love to. That would be uh, super fun. That sounds awesome. And Chris needs to come on and talk about uh, I don't know Metroid. See, you need to stop saying Chris because that's both of our names. I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's why we're bitches and money. Because <laughs> otherwise, it's fucking confusing. It's All right, confusing. bitches, you have some. You have a plug for us. I do. It's my same plug as always because we are drawing near, nigh even to Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving weekend is Lost Con. Woo. So you're going to survive. I promise you. You will survive dinner with your parents. Come away afterward, or dinner with your kids, even. Come away afterward and reward yourself for not murdering anybody with a weekend full of nerds who want to hang out with you. And if you are listening to Buffy right now, then you are absolutely the kind of nerd we're looking for. So come on out. Hang out with some nerds. It's a hell of a good time. All right. And uh, I have, you know, all I'm going to do is plug the unspoiled umbrella of all of these podcasts. So all of your... All of your pop culture is covered by our podcast queen, Natasha, and she's a lot better at it than I am, so you should be listening to her. And if you enjoy what you're hearing, you can check out uh, Harry Potter, you can Ooh. check out Justified, you can Ooh. check out uh, – I'm, I'm loving the Dark Tower right about now. Um, and if you like what we're doing and you want to support us and you want to keep us in cheap boxed wine and microphone socks, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash unspoiled. And there's a tiered system, and if you want to get your podcast a day early, if you want to have Cocktail Hour with Natasha, if you want to get access to the patrons-only podcasts, you should become a patron. And the patrons-only podcast right now is Luke Cage, which I can't wait to watch, but I don't have any damn time. So um, and after that is going to be Twin Peaks, which is going to be bonkers. So I cannot wait for Natasha to freak out as she hears that So and she watches that. I tried to watch the first episode of Luke Cage last night with girlfriend, and we got a little distracted. So we're gonna have to try and do that. It's again that tonight. sexy. It's yeah, a sexy, it's sexy show, dude. It's, wow. it's that sexy. We had to um, get distracted in the middle of it. Dude, so, there's everyone in that show is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to rub myself like against most of them. It was pretty <laughs> bad. 
Uh, You're not allowed to do that anymore. That's why there's a restraining order, Chris. <laughs> That's why I have a pussy vault. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you guys, you guys were also both on the uh, Unspoiled Book Club. That's right. We didn't mention the book club. So the next book club coming up is It, and yes. that's going to be Natasha and uh, Jamie Smith, right? Yes. That's her last name are yeah. going to be. And I am. I am only twenty percent in the book. The book is super long, but it's super engaging. I can't wait to um, actually have some time to finish it. So. So I haven't read the book in twenty years, so I'm looking forward to just blasting through it again, the way I did when I was like sixteen. It should be fun. And if you like, if you like to hear us, you can hear bitches talk about American Gods. That was last month, and the two months before that, that was me and Natasha, and we discussed Snow Crash and Cloud Atlas. I haven't yeah. heard those two, but I did listen to the American Gods one, and that's my favorite one so far. It was really good. Hooray! Thank you. Yeah, you guys, um, did, you do guys did a kick-ass job. And listeners, it's the only place you can hear my Twilight Twinkie theory, which is well <laughs> worth the listen. <laughs> Uh, all right <laughs> so that's our show <laughs> uh owen thanks you for joining us it was uh we did not stay on track at all but it was massively entertaining so well thank uh, you for having me it was a lot better than watching the actual show thank you for being hat <laughs> all right i will say this is the only episode i've seen three times Ooh. Wow. Well, <laughs> we can remedy that all right so Good night, bitches. Good night, Owen. Good night, money. Good night, Owen. Good night, bitches. Good night, money. Good night, night, listeners. listeners. Bye. 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 Bye.